January 22nd, 2026, in about a week, and something rare is about to happen. 3i Atlas will align with the Sun-Earth axis to within 0.69 degrees. That's not sort of close. That's nearly perfect opposition. Earth will pass almost exactly between the Sun and 3i Atlas. And that geometry creates an opportunity that might not repeat for decades. Subscribe right now. Turn on notifications. Because what I'm about to show you is the phenomenon we can measure during this alignment and why it matters. So let's talk about what opposition actually means. When Earth passes between the Sun and another object, we call that opposition. The object appears opposite the Sun in our sky. And at that exact moment, the geometry creates unique lighting conditions. For 3i Atlas, opposition happens January 22nd at 13 Hapara UTC. The phase angle, the angle between the Sun Atlas axis and the Sun Earth axis, will be just 0.69 degrees. That's remarkably small. And unlike typical cometary oppositions that last a few hours, 3i Atlas will maintain a phase angle below 2 degrees for approximately one week, January 19th through 26th. That extended duration is critical because it allows us to separate phase angle effects from intrinsic brightness variations. We can measure how the object's brightness changes purely as a function of viewing geometry, not activity fluctuations. Now, why does this matter? Because at phase angles below 10 degrees, most solar system bodies show a substantial brightness increase called the opposition surge, and we've almost never measured this effect for comets. The opposition surge comes from two physical effects. Shadow hiding happens at phase angles above 2 degrees. When the sun, object, and observer are nearly aligned, shadows cast by dust particles are hidden behind the particles themselves. That eliminates dark areas and increases brightness. Coherent backscatter happens at phase angles below 2 degrees. At very small angles, light traveling on reciprocal paths through dusty medium interferes constructively. Quantum mechanics creates a narrow brightness spike. The surge amplitude tells us about dust grain properties, specifically the scattering albedo, how reflective the grains are. Dark carbonaceous material has low albedo around 0.03. Icy fragments have high albedo around 0.1 to 0.3. The angular width of the surge tells us about grain structure. Compact particles show narrow surges a few degrees wide. Fluffy fractal aggregates show broad surges tens of degrees wide. Only one comet has a well-measured opposition surge, 67P churyumov gerasimenko Rosetta spacecraft observed it at phase angles 1.3 to 5 degrees. Results showed very dark albedo around 0.034. For most solar system comets, opposition surge measurements are unavailable or incomplete because they never get below 10 degree phase angles. And 2i Borisov, the previous interstellar comet, was never observed below 16 degrees, far outside the opposition surge regime. 3i Atlas, we're getting down to 0.69 degrees. That's unprecedented for an interstellar object. So what can the opposition surge reveal about 3i Atlas? Composition. Is the dust dominated by dark carbonaceous material? Or does it contain significant ice fragments like some researchers have suggested based on the extended anti-tail? Low albedo around 0.03 means carbonaceous. High albedo around 0.1 to 0.3 means icy. Grain structure. Are the grains compact, thermally processed in a planetary system, or fluffy fractal aggregates? Pristine molecular cloud material that never experienced heating? Narrow surge width means compact. Broad surge means fluffy. This matters because cometary dust is processed through protoplanetary disks. Its structure might differ from pure interstellar dust. If 3i Atlas shows grain properties consistent with unprocessed molecular cloud material, that tells us it formed in a very different environment than solar system comets. If it shows processed grains, that suggests it came from a mature planetary system with thermal evolution similar to ours. Either way, we get direct information about material from another star system. Now here's what's needed to capture this data. Temporal coverage, observations over at least plus the four days around January 22nd, that keeps us below 2 degree phase angle and allows us to track how brightness changes with geometry. Photometry, high precision measurements, 
better than 0.03 magnitude per data point. That's sensitive enough to detect the nonlinear brightness increase from the surge. Multi-band observations, at least three filters like B, V, R, or G, R, I. The wavelength dependence helps distinguish between shadow hiding and coherent backscatter. Polarimetry, linear polarization measurements near minimum phase angle would independently constrain grain structure. Even sparse sampling would significantly enhance interpretation. Aperture, 3i, Atlas will be about magnitude 16.5 to 17 during opposition. Telescopes larger than one meter are well suited for precise photometry. Larger apertures needed for polarimetry. Coordinated observations from multiple sites improve temporal sampling and mitigate weather gaps. Even partial data sets contribute meaningfully. This is a community effort. Amateur and professional observers with access to suitable telescopes have a rare opportunity. So here's where we are. January 22nd, 2026. 3i Atlas reaches 0.69 degree phase angle. Opposition surge becomes measurable one week window below 2 degrees. This geometry won't repeat at useful brightness levels. In January 2027, phase angle is 1.4 degrees, but magnitude drops to 24, requiring much larger telescopes. In 2028, phase angle is 0.8 degrees, but magnitude is 25. This is the window. January 19th to 26th, 2026. If you want to see what the opposition surge reveals about 3i Atlas's dust composition and grain structure, subscribe and turn on notifications. Because this measurement happens once, and the data it produces might finally answer whether the dust we're seeing is pristine interstellar material or processed planetary system debris, one week. Starting January 19th. The alignment is coming. I'll see you in the next one.